welcome to the first ever episode of 52%. The show that explores everything and anything going on in Liverpool and beyond from the perspective of 52% of the population, women. I'm Jennifer Jewell. And I'm Lisa Simmons. Now, last Sunday, the 8th of March, was International Women's Day, which celebrates women's economic, political and social achievements, globally, nationally and, of course, locally. And so today, we'll be taking a look at some of the amazing Women's Day events that happened around Liverpool, as well as chatting to two brilliant women from Merseyside. So here's what's coming up on today's show. We're joined by two celebrated Liverpool women in the studio now. Actress and TV presenter Terry Dwyer and entrepreneur and host of Liverpool Business Club Enterprising Women, Karen Belly. And thanks for joining us today, ladies, in the studio. Hello. So this week's all about International Women's Day. And yes. why is it still important this day and age to have that? I think, uh, well, it's a reminder of where we've come from. You know, the suffragettes doing their thing. I mean, without what they did, we wouldn't be even mm. here now. And um, so I think on one level, it's that. And for me personally, um, because I've got to confess, up until a couple of years ago, it kind of went over my head. I thought it was one of those American things that we'd yeah. stolen. And, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know whether it's because I'm, I'm getting to an age now where it's probably a bit more relevant. Um, but certainly the last couple of years, I've taken much more interest in it. And I think for me personally, it's, it's an opportunity to think about those women that are in other countries, you know, that don't have the luxury that we have and live in the society that we have. And, you know, they're fighting their own wars. Mm. And I think for me, it, it, it's a point to remember that, that we are very lucky to. I mean, we've still got a long way to go with equality and everything else but we're lucky to live in the society that we do you know we are a generation that is trying to have it all aren't we and, yeah and there's women that don't even have a tenth of what we've got no, overseas so I think I need to think about that that's what I use it for mm. I don't know about you you probably um, well I've had a lot of experience from it coming from the voluntary sector previously and for me it's about celebrating the lives of women across the world yes. and also celebrating how much we've achieved and how much we've come forward from the time when we weren't allowed mm. to do anything really now in your line of business gender equality is quite a big issue isn't it we spoke about this yeah. before and how have you come across that in your line of business Karen well we were talked about previously yeah. before that when I first left school, I really wanted to be a motor vehicle mechanic. <laughs> and I was told that I couldn't be one because um, it wasn't a thing that girls did. And so when I left school in 79, there wasn't very much options for young women. Mm. Um, so it was either a teacher, or a nurse, so I became a nurse. Mm. So look, we look now how we've moved forward and the opportunities are more for women is exceptional. I think we need to really shine that and, and expand that and, and present that to our women mm. of this generation. I mean, it is in everything, though, isn't it? It's in, I think because of the business that we're in, people don't realise that actually it's prevalent. I mean, if you look at the uh, academies that have just been on, there was some there was nominations for guys for something like 230 different nominations, where it was about 30 for women. It's not because women aren't as good. No. It's just because there's still yeah. not the opportunities in our industry. Well, as Patricia Arquette in her, in her speech, I actually, know. Um, you know, she was whooped and hollered yeah. by Meryl Streep for her, you know, her having a voice, yeah. which is great to see in this day and age even Hollywood A-listers well speaking of A-listers actually interestingly one of the highest paid male actors is Johnny Depp yeah I mean it's not shabby you know something <laughs> like 80 million a year and uh, the highest female and uh, Angelina Jolie mm. I, I mean the, um, the, the, the figures aren't exactly right but it was probably about 30 million I mean you wow. know, I'd quite like to have yeah. 30 million a year I mean, you know, but, but compared to 80 million it's I a know, big it's difference massive. isn't it yeah. it's a massive difference and, and it's not because she's any lesser actress or that Johnny Depp is amazing. Yeah, he's pretty Johnny good Depp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is Johnny Depp. But, um, I mean, how can that still go on? Yeah. Yes. How can it still go on in the society? And I think because, the, you know, people look at our business, don't they, and they think it's all glamorous, but they're still fighting the same battle as people that you come across, you know, in what you're doing as well. Because we find in business, we're saying um, women entrepreneurs within business, uh, there's less board members within boards, um, we're paid less, um, the deals are done behind the, the doors, the, the bonuses are given on the golf courses, so it is still a man's world out there, and there is a disparity about what we actually get to what we're actually worth. Mm -hmm. and so I think you're saying we need to have women playing more golf then, is this what you're telling us? <laughs> <laughs> then nothing would, would happen. happen. I'm <laughs> terrible at like golf, please don't say that. Oh no, no, I'm awful. The world would not carry on turning if we were on the golf courses. 
Oh, absolutely not. What about children? Because children play a vital role in this as well, don't they? The next generation. Well, Terry, you have two boys, so how would you get this across to your well, boys? Well, interestingly, our roles have... It's been difficult because I had two career breaks. I mean, not not enforced on me. I was still working. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was doing 60 Minute Makeover, I was lucky enough to be able to take my son with me and I was mm -hmm. breastfeeding. You know, there's not that many jobs mm -hmm. that you can do that. But, um, and I've just, uh, I've been away since November. I've been in London doing a West End play. So Daddy Daycare's been in charge. You know, he's <laughs> been doing the pickups and the drop-offs. But Absolutely, we'll, we'll chat a little bit more yes, about it. Yeah. We're gonna watch a little VT now, Lisa. Okay then, well, there's been a lot going on of, uh, around Liverpool and Merseyside to celebrate International Women's Day. Thousands of women have taken part in the National Women's Day awareness campaign, Painted Purple. There have been numerous events all over the city at the museums, universities, and there's been a march at the Peace Gardens, which is behind St George's Hall, to name just a few. Gail Legrand headed over to Does Liverpool to catch up with Liverpool Girl Geeks at their Women's Day tech event. As part of International Women's Day, Liverpool Girl Geeks organised an event to encourage women towards careers in technology. Throughout the whole day, women of all ages have been able to discover and share skills from 3D printing to laser cutting. We're here today at Liverpool Supports International Women's Day with Chelsea Slater, who's the founder of Liverpool Girl Geeks. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, Liverpool Girl Geeks is an online community trying to um, celebrate and inspire women in technology, because there's not many of us in tech in Britain. I think the stats are there's only 16% of women working in tech, so we want to um, encourage girls. Um, so tell us a bit about what's happening today here. We are here to celebrate and inspire women in technology and digital industries. We're here at Does Liverpool and we're doing an all-day um, networking event with some of the digital and technology um, companies um, that are here in Liverpool. So we've got Draw and Code, um, Red Ninja Studios, um, Open Labs at LJMU, Innovators Hub, Juxtip, um, Scraper Wiki some of the digital and tech companies that want to support women in technology. We've got 3D printing going on, laser cutting. Um, we've got a workshop from Red Ninja Studios about app development. And we've got a networking brunch, um, which is ongoing and it's provided by Locks and Caper, one of the local independent cafes around the corner. According to you, why do you think there's not that many women in technology today? I think there's not enough role models for women in technology. Um, if you look at Mark Zuckerberg and Richard Branson and, and these kind of Albert Einstein, um, they're all male. There's not many women that we can look up to and I think that's the main reason. Do you think that that has to do something with school as well? Maybe girls are not uh, directed towards technology, it's a little bit like science. Yeah, definitely. I think the perception of women from a young age is to be ner like nurses and teachers because we're more caring, whereas men are pushed into being more technolo te technological and um, doing like the stereotype of doing men's stuff, whereas um, things like coding and, and stuff that's come about now is so creative. Women and men think totally differently, so why not have both of them skill sets to create even better tech in the future. And what do you think we can do for that? How, how can we help women to go more into technology? I mean, that's what Liverpool Girl Geeks is doing. But Yeah, I think we just need to um, inspire them by showing how creative that it can be working in technology. It's not just about sitting behind the computer and coding. And if it is, then it's still really creative because what you're making is an, an amazing app or a website. Um, but yeah, just showing the creativity behind it. I think that's the main, main thing that we're trying to do. I'm now with Caroline Keep. Hello, Caroline. Can you, can you tell us a bit uh, how did you get involved into this project? I've been, um, I've been a maker for some time and I am a maker who's transferring into education. So obviously I have, a, as an ex-scientist, I have a, a kind of a vested interest for young girls especially to be able to promote them to the, the biggest ambitions, especially if they're in science and technology and industry. Um, I'm part of the Headworks project at JMU, so it's a project to bring educators and makers together and we won quite a lot. There's a lot of different groups that are involved in that. Does Liverpool are involved in that? Jamie are involved in that? Educators are involved in that? 
makers, builders, anybody who has an interest in this kind of thing is involved. And um, I was asked by Chelsea to come on board for Liverpool Girl Geeks to give them some support for it. So uh, it's been a thrilling experience, I've got to admit. And it, they are all on the same kind of track of thinking. To get girls to be interested in technology, you've really got to see young women and girls using technology in the way that they want to use it. So it's a, it's a real pleasure to be able to help them run this event. How do you manage to bring girls towards more technology? Um, you've got to make it relevant to them. I mean, I teach physics as well. I'm retraining as a secondary science physics teacher um, just for the simple fact that we needed more young girls to be interested in things like physics and chemistry, maths, engineering, technologies, some of the subjects that they shy away from more. And um, I think if you want to really get them more interested in that, you've got to make it more relevant. I mean, you've probably seen today my little girl wandering around building herself a 3D printed My Little Pony. You know, it may seem like, well, it's very girly, but that My Little Pony that she's 3D printing will teach her later how to 3D print or laser cut. She's nine. You know, these are skills that if you learn to develop from a young age and get involved really at any age, but for girls, if they get it at a young age, they're much more comfortable at an older age pursuing careers like that. So really, it's really critical to get them exposed to the things that they can do in the way that they want to do it. Hello and welcome back to 52%. Don't forget you can join us on this topic if you follow us on Twitter at BayTV underscore Liverpool, hashtag 52. Just before our break, we joined Gael at Liverpool Girl Geeks Women Days Tech Event. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am hopeless with technology. <laughs> is, How is, do you all yeah, feel? Is it, is it oh. a man's industry, do you think? I think it still is predominantly a man's industry. We have a lot of young women coming through, and it's really fabulous to see the, the Liverpool Geeks <laughs> appearing and, uh, on the TV. Um, but when it comes to grassroots, there's still more boys and young men entering that that industry so it's it kind of links into to our topic today yeah um, Gail you went yeah. you went along to the event so did you find that it's important for the women to come together and share their experiences yeah technology? absolutely what, what I understood from it was uh, a lot about the education as well how to bring uh, young girls into technology and what was striking was this little girl nine years old and she was coding and she was <laughs> 3d printing so she was making all these and she she wants to be an architect so it's um, it's it's really something that you bring from um, when when they're kids, really. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's yeah, because technology now is getting a lot bigger just with the younger generation. I know yeah. you both ladies have got children, Lisa yourself. How much are kids at home now using oh, it's technology? It's ridiculous. I mean, my two boys. They, my <laughs> eldest is actually loads better than me already. Yeah. But you see, I was at a generation at school where our computers like were the size of rooms. Mm. I mean, I I I get so frustrated because everything takes so long and. I just think I've missed that boat, unfortunately. But I know it's really important, you know, there becomes a time, I think, at school where they're going to start getting all their homework on the computer. Mm -hmm. But I know I'm going to, like, my son's got to do a PowerPoint. I'm already get a, get getting into a cold sweat. Yeah. What do I do with a PowerPoint? How do I do it? <laughs> so I might pass that one over to my husband. But he's equally as rubbish. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely a generation thing, isn't it? So yeah. hopefully in the future, I don't know if you saw that at the event, Gail, that maybe the next generation there will be a lot more women involved. I in think technology. so, yeah. And that's what this little girl was telling me as well, is that in her school, all the girls are really good at coding at in computers and that there's not that many boys really involved into it and um, Caroline was telling me that the important thing is to bring girl to understand that they can create whatever they want really as that technology is not reserved only to boys and that they can really make I it happen. They, need to be, they have to be careful with that name geek though mm. I mean I know it's like to us it's a quirky name for a show but the last thing kids want to be is a geek yeah, single so they belt. need to kind of make it a little bit cooler because yeah. mm. even my son the other day you know he's a bright little boy but he doesn't want to be in the geek club oh, no. No. you know nobody wants to be, wanna in, be in the popular club yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> Lisa you've got you've got two children obviously do you well. find like your, your boys more interested I in technology absolutely I mean for me and I'm sure Terry can relate to this if there's something goes wrong tech wise Harry 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 how do I fix this yeah. and Olivia will be happily colouring in so Harry's 12 he'll be oh, well, 13 he's a proper young man, so oh yeah if, uh, when in doubt ask Harry yeah. <laughs> I can colour in he's only just turned nine so actually he's he, he, he's still he, he's very good but even um Kai my youngest you know when he was a little and he was, mm. but he'd then go on yeah. somebody else's phone that wasn't 
an iPhone and start trying to swipe <laughs> Wonder why back. it doesn't move. <laughs> but, you know, I know a lot of people criticise. I mean, we ban technology Monday to Friday mm. because there's no doubt about it. My kids' attitudes change. They get ignorant. They don't hear you. Particularly Caden, depending on what he plays, he can get a little bit hyper. Mm. So Monday to Friday, we ban it. But then Friday when they finish school, they're... And around the iPads. dinner table as well, I find it really, I don't like the children having iPads, iPhones no. or anything around the dinner table. I just think that's the time for us to sit and discuss what's yeah. going on in school, you, that kind you of thing. That's a rule in we your have house, a, don't That's you? a rule in our house, no phones at the dinner table. We don't even have a TV in the dining room. Really? It's just and we've always manners, coped yeah. that because it's about the, the, um, the dinner time being about us all coming together. So that's we don't develop always, their yeah. social skills yeah. as yeah. well, isn't it? You know, as an adult, you know, yeah. if you're sitting there and you've got your phone <laughs> and you've got one ear on whoever's <laughs> talking to you, we all, yeah. And you do try your best, but you get distracted you by do. work, don't you? We yeah. are very strict on that in our house, so I really put the reels down. But there is another thing I'd like to add is that the fact that older women coming in, because a lot of grandmas are on, mm. on the internet now and they're supporting the young people to help the, with the technology yeah. as well. There's loads of grandmothers on Facebook mm. and Twitter oh, and yeah, things like that. My mum's on Facebook. <laughs> and what I found was I came from the generation where when I first was at work, I used what was, I don't know what it was, but it was something I punched information into, which was probably a computer connected to a, a mainframe somewhere. Mm. And I had no experience of of any kind of mm. working with computers. And I've been self-taught. In fact, that my business launch, my daughter took over my social media and helped me set up everything for it. And I'm, I now am presenting doing business with LinkedIn for, mm. for other women because I've really grasped the importance of social media with business and technology. Mm. So it can be achieved from knowing nothing to actually I've got business Absolutely. on LinkedIn. There's hope yeah. for us, Lisa. Yeah. Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> you might finally pick it up one day, but hopefully Maybe. we're going to see more, more girls, more young yeah. girls and more women going into the world of technology. Can, can we just drop down on the selfies, though? I, just, oh, <laughs> I love a good selfie. selfie. I'm not going to lie. I love a good <laughs> selfie. <laughs> anyway, we're going to move on now to trends and topics. We're going to be talking about what's been trending this week. And a big to talking point was Kate Middleton's just announced that she's going to stop using beauty products in her pregnancy. Well, if you look like Kate Middleton, you probably could get away with it. I'm sorry, but you if I stop using beauty products, yeah. I mean, she's got everything. Yeah, well, I roll over in bed, my husband would go, who are you? Who <laughs> cordoned my bed last night? <laughs> well, she's not going to use any fake tan. She's not going to dye her hair. No Anything fake tan? Like, no, no. No fake tan. That girl can never come to Liverpool. She looks like Casper. <laughs> Yeah, Terry's shocked that she actually ever used fake tan, but it's it's this talk about she's got so much pressure on her to look to look yeah. a certain way and to always look perfect and preened, but it's important that she's putting a baby. I can't feel bed. sorry for her though. No. I'm really sorry. She, I mean, you know, she's part of the monarchy. She's got the life of Riley. I, I mean, I think it's a really brave thing, don't you, to, to not use any beauty products, particularly because you're protecting, you know, actually in a friend of mine's... So, um, brother he's a scientist and he you know he's, he's always looking up blood and he says you can see mm. fake tan when he's when he's no. yeah quite scary really? isn't it? in the blood yeah oh gosh we're both oh. <laughs> yeah. you're tanned out to death <laughs> <laughs> i don't what? think i'll be putting that on but um <laughs> but it's it's kind of a great thing that she spoke out about it as well don't you think karen to, to teach other women you know once you're pregnant especially it's y yourself is not the main the main priority i kind of think it's about producing self-esteem in our young women as well mm -hmm. because also the mask doesn't always make the person mm. and we all do even i do survive i need to have some makeup on yeah. but also we need to understand that the makeup doesn't make the person mm. and the intellect of the woman so it's a really brave thing for us it to is. do and we've seen some of our young people doing it with the the facebook campaign as well where they took the yeah. makeup Cup off so yeah. In interestingly there's yeah. a lot of hoo-ha isn't there when um, people in the public eye you know they put all this weight on because I put five stone on both my pregnancies okay. and I didn't snap back mm -hmm. you know but you know there is a responsibility isn't there to this younger generation to to teach them that it's about what's inside and actually the the aesthetics yeah, Isn't but I find important. her as a great role model because you remember last She's time she brilliant. had yeah. she had the baby, she came out in a dress and you could still yeah. see the bump and she didn't look like a lot of other celebrities who come out and they look like they've they've never had the baby in their whole life, never mind yesterday. Mm. But she's she's really good at setting that example to say, I you know what, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and I loved her when she just wears high yeah. street. She yeah. I think her she's somebody that we can all relate to. You know, for the monarchy for a long time, they've sat on this pedestal and they're, they're so far removed from us. It's mm. really difficult to understand the life they're in. But I think for, for Kate, She's kind of one of us, isn't she? Mm. Made good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a better yeah. version of us. <laughs> she did get the fairy tale. She did get the fairy tale. That could have been us. She did, which is not fair. Okay, another lady who's been in the press a lot this week is Emma Watson. She's now got her He for She campaign, yes. which, which we love, don't we? But after she'd done a speech on International Women's Day, she got 
a lot of trolls on Twitter threatening to leak nude pictures of her. And she just said that kind of, for me, confirms that there is a lot of hatred towards women speaking out. I believe so. the internet's been great for a lot of things, but unfortunately it gives those kind of people a voice. I had a terrible time when I was on Loose Women because, you know, we have to be vocal. It's, it's a debate show and that's what we did. And I was pregnant at the time and there was people putting up saying, I hope her unborn baby is killed. And I mean, that is just one step too far. Okay, have an opinion. Mm. I mean, you know, these people are the people that pay our wages, so they are important and their opinions do matter. But who says that mm. who says those vile things it, and it was on a forum when we managed to get it taken down because it's slanderous yes, of course but you know i think these people don't realize how much that hurts you know why would you you would never say that if you, you that were face to face yeah, would you but you know it, it makes them very brave they sit at home don't they and they're thinking well they're probably never going to read it and i'm never going to meet them and it's just vile they some do, of the, the thing there is it there's a difference between an opinion and directing abuse at somebody mm. don't well, do you agree yeah it is isn't abuse isn't it that's it's, what it is yeah it's Who not an opinion born baby dead yeah i mean what a vile thing to do i kind of think that in this society people forget that they have to be mindful about what they're writing in, mm. in the virtual world and that the fact that they don't realise, like you said, what actually the impact it is on the person mm. who's receiving that. And I think a lot of the new legislation that's coming through will help around that. But obviously we just have to be mindful. I would never say anything to anyone I wouldn't say to myself. And I think if we but all took really that... can they police it though, Karen? That's the thing, because you can do it from an IP address that's untraceable. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how can they police that kind of slander? I mean, because I, I, I came completely off social media before I set my business up because of that issue where I had um, some horrible things mm. said about and images took in a group mm. away from me and then I was really not wanting to do social media, but then part of the business, you have to do mm. social media. Oh. And like in your job, you are put up into the, in, into the public arena. So I kind of think it is around us maybe looking at how we educate our young mm. people to understand that there's an impact in that and it'll be generationally changed over time but there's always going to be idiots and yes, easily don't take it. Well there's nothing it. wrong with um, criticism as long as it's constructive. Yeah. You know we, we're encouraging you to join in this debate yeah. um, at Bay TV underscore Liverpool hashtag 52 but please stay yeah. away from the trolley. <laughs> Just nice <laughs> no constructive No abuse please. <laughs> but we all like criticism. We all yeah, want to be a it. better version of ourselves, whether it be privately or publicly. So mm -hmm. I do think it's important to take Absolutely. it on board but there's a lie. There mm. is, there is. Thank you very much ladies. Okay join us after the break for more 52%. Hello and welcome back to 52%. Now, last week, Mersey Care brought together parents and carers across the region to explore the impact of being a mother and a carer on women's lives as part of their Women's Day event. So, Mersey Care uh, NHS Trust, this is the sixth year that we've celebrated International Women's Day. And we've always held an event here at Oakmere because we think it's a very special venue. And it's about celebrating the achievements of women over the years, but also looking ahead with optimism around supporting not just women locally, but also internationally. So, an International Women's Day is a recognised uh, celebration on the 8th of March every year. It's been running for over 100 years now. In fact, in some countries, it's actually um, a national holiday. So, uh, I think that's something we should be aiming for. So, we want to work together to join across the world with women in celebrating, but also continuing uh, the fight for women's rights and uh, the emancipation of women wherever they are in the world. Um, Women's Day should be every day, and I do tell my husband that, but he doesn't always listen to it. But actually, every day we should be caring and thinking about each other, no matter what gender we are. Um, a number of years ago, Bernardo started to work very, very closely with Mersey Care. And even though we're a children's organisation and they're an adult organisation, traditionally people would think, well, why on earth would they be working together? And the reason why we work together is because we both work with families. Mersey Care works with adults. Many adults are parents who may have mental health issues. And our work is to support children who take on a caring role. So it was really important that we developed a strong partnership, a really collaborative way of working. And so today is a celebration of some of that joint work that we do together. Yeah, I'm a young adult carer, so I've been, I was a young carer from the age of 13 and I'm now 20, so I've got into the young care, like the young adult carers. Um, yes, yeah, so we're here today to just 
basically educate people and share our yeah, experiences, share experiences. Yeah. stress but then also positive stuff as well because you've got a yeah. closer and better relationship with the person you're looking after but then that also brings negatives like looking after the house and stuff like that so it is quite hard but there is a lot of positives that come out of it so our service provides that that support directly in the city but we can't do that on our own it's no point just thinking well Bernardo's can solve it because we can't but what Bernardo's can do is work very closely with their partners in adult services particularly Mersey Care, Liverpool City Council and the Clinical Commissioning Group and together we can provide what we call a whole family approach so children are not being ignored but neither are their parents and together we can have what we call better outcomes which basically means is help families achieve what it is that we know they can achieve with the right level of support. Yeah, I'm a lot more mature. I look at me compared to my friends. Mature in ways, don't get me wrong, I can't be immature. Mature in other ways, yeah, definitely. Yeah, every, like loads of people say to me, I'm mature from my age. I yeah. act older than I am because it's just a responsibility that you've got to do. You've got to be older than you are. Um, we wouldn't change it for the world, would we? No, definitely no, not. Definitely not. I've got a brilliant relationship with my mum, so I wouldn't change it now. Yeah, I wouldn't change it. But here in Liverpool, at this event, we're celebrating International Women's Day. And the reason why we involve our Think Family work, we do it together today, because the two themes, yeah, they are very distinct, but they're also very, very similar. Many women are parents, um, and they do that job absolutely, you know, no cause to concern. They get on with the job, they do it so well. But for many mums, they may well have some difficulties and may well need additional support. So that's why we need to think family on International Women's Day as well and connect it all. Such an interesting video to watch, isn't it, Lisa? It was. Karen, you said earlier um, that you've been involved in nursing. Did you find it was predominantly women or were there any men nursing? Well, I qualified a long time ago, 1982, <laughs> and there were very few men then. But I've seen over the years that men have become more enrolled into that profession and I think a lot of it to do now is because of the kudos it gets because now you have a university degree so it's seen as a profession now mm. and not more as a, of a vocation mm. so I think over the years it has grown yeah caring and nature in general is just always automatically yeah. seen as something a woman should do yeah do you think? Well, I suppose yeah it's what we do isn't it <laughs> we're the bearer of children yeah. it's, it's what we do naturally I was cared for oh, quite some time but years ago I had a car crash in London and I was cared for by a male nurse there and okay. he was amazing he really sticks in my mind all these years later mm. I mean I was very poorly but he was equally as caring mm. as any female nurse I've been looked after yeah I know when, you know if the children hurt themselves it's always mum they want when or the children wake sick, up in yeah. bed sick of a night it's always go running to mum you've got all this to come <laughs> <Jack>. <laughs> I can't wait yeah <laughs> Cannot wait, but I think it's. I feel like I know I haven't got children, but just looking after, even if I have my nieces and I look after them, you get like a really nice feeling as a woman. Yeah, I think yeah. that someone who needs you in that the way thing is, we do have roles in this society, yeah. you know, we are naturally much more caring. I mean, my husband's a wonderful father, but mm -hmm. I just think it comes naturally to women that the way men are physically stronger. Sorry, all you feminists out there, they're <laughs> going to be shooting the telly, but you know, men they are physically stronger, they have a traditionally, they have a more analytical mind, yeah. you know. We do have roles. Mm -hmm. We there's a reason why we're women and they're men. Yes, absolutely. Well, it can, <laughs> and it can affect business, as you said before. It affected mm. your career. You've had to take two career ba yeah. breaks. Does that go against as a woman? Well, do you know the, the, the trouble is it wasn't forced on me. But you know how many jobs can you take your child while you're breastfeeding? And yeah, they were career, career breaks. My my youngest is now just at reception since September. So I now feel like I can really commit again. But mm -hmm. because we knew we wanted two kids, you know, even after the first one, it was always in the back of my mind yes. and. You know, they're young for such a short amount yeah. of time. You know, I love my job and I'm mm -hmm. really committed and still very ambitious. But, you know, there's moments that you, I, I'm in a position where I, I have been able to, you know, look, be at home a little bit. Whereas, you know, not every mother has that opportunity. Some of them are forced back into the workplace and, and you know, both parents do have to go out to work. I mean, I do, you know, yeah. I can't not work. Exactly. But, yeah. um, you know, I've been lucky that we, we switched a bit, you know, Sean, was really full on with his work then so I, I took the lead a little bit at home and then since my youngest has gone to school you know daddy daycare has been in charge yes. while I was swanning around on the west end <laughs> but actually it's good 
because they realize then what we have to do. I mean, yep. it's like a military operation when I go to work. Yes. Sean just puts something in his diary and off he goes. Oh, by the way, I'm not here this week. Where's me? <laughs> I've got stickers here. I've got calendars here. <laughs> So-and-so's picking up from football and, and I'm ringing up and the kid. But he <sighs> manages much better than I think but does, men think the yeah, game exactly. Oh, God, they think it's easy, don't they? And then they give it a go and they realize that the work that women do, and it can go against you in business. You, it can affect yeah. your mind as, as a woman. You've got so much on your mind thinking what you've got to do after school, what you've got to do mm -hmm. tomorrow at the weekend. Do you think it goes against women in business, Karen? I, I think it kind of does. And I think we have to kind of look at how it's going to be in the future mm -hmm. because the generation, women are living longer, so we're going to be more in more roles. Um, we're taking over the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also to the fact that I remember when I was a young woman and I had to let my babies go back go back to work and the things I missed and mm. they took photographs of me and, but I missed things like the first steps and mm. things like that. My youngest was at school, was, was at nursery from 10 months old. She was at child manners and then went to nursery for uh, about 12, 12 months old. So I missed the first steps and things like that. But what we can see is that... Um, there needs to be, I think, more awareness of how the culture changes and with the flexible hours coming in and men being more involved in parental mm. leave and things like that. Maybe in the future there will be a shared process mm. for parenting but it takes more than a woman to bring up well, a child. It does, yeah. and it's not yeah. just the bringing up. You know, when you're pregnant, you've got baby brain. You're just, yeah, you're not as sharp as your counterpart yeah, that's a male. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's no excuse if he's 12. <laughs> no, but you, so it's not just about, you know, having them and then being there. It, it, it affects us physically, and there's no way, I mean, there's no way I was as sharp as somebody, mm. you know, the male counterpart in, in my career. So it's, it's, it's such a long period. And to defend men slightly, if I was an employer and I had two candidates and one was a young woman that was fertile yeah. and a young man in my head, I'm not going to lie, I am going to think, well, she's going to want to go off and, and have kids. So it, it, we st I, I don't know what the answer is, but for women, that is still an issue, isn't it? It is. Do you yeah. think women can have it all? I mean, let's, oh, let's make the point so here. We are not bra burning feminists, yeah. but no. can women have it all? Can we? Isn't this the discussion that you constantly have with yeah. your friends yeah. over a glass of wine? Because actually we want to believe we can, mm. but I don't know. I kind of think because my company, we do cultural intelligence and we have to look at the sex as being a culture. So there's a difference between a man and a woman. Mm. I'm, not a, I'm not a staunch feminist, but I do fight for women's rights. Mm. But there is differences and there's, there's physical differences as well, the jobs that we can't do. But we need to understand that the, the needs to be with around employment, the specific understanding of the culture. Mm. And a woman's culture is different from a man's culture. We think different. I know, for instance, when I go into meetings, there's a very vast difference when a woman, if it's a whole men in the, in the group and a woman is the, the complete training operation is different. The dynamics changes with one, just one man being in the group. And also the way women interject in meetings will interrupt and mm. men don't do that. Men mm. have their own space. You've got to let them finish. It's very not the right way to do mm. business. And we do do business in a different way and we're flexible and we're able to jump from one conversation to another. But I do think yeah. we need both. You yeah. know, I, I've been in yeah. environments where it's all women yeah. and that's yes. not healthy, oh, as yeah. is no, not all no, men. No. I mean, we do need it, but we need things that are put into place it's, to allow for us to have yeah. baby brain and mm. to bring, bring our kids up and it not affect our career. I mean, the two breaks I've had, who knows how it would have happened if yeah. I hadn't have had them, but each time I've gone back to work, I feel like I've had to almost start again. Yeah. You know, the men don't... a little bit harder. Well, really work hard, yeah, yeah and be doing the kind of stuff that I thought I'd, I'd already done back yeah. in the day. But, you see, men, they don't have that, but then I suppose we have the luxury of being able to carry a child and we do, have a child. I was going to say, obviously there's a lot of negatives to being a woman in the workplace, yeah. in business, but is there is there positives that you can bring to the role as a mother? Oh, yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> 52% of us, the population. <laughs> yeah, I think all life experiences for yeah. man or woman yeah. are, are, are relevant in the workplace. And I think it's about finding a balance, isn't mm. it? It's about allowing women to be women and do what we are made to do, but it not affecting our hopes and dreams as it doesn't men. Yeah, because I mean, I'm, I'm not a parent now, and I know for me, uh, all my focus is on my career. And mm. I think sometimes that can be, you put so much pressure on yourself to, yeah. to achieve something. I don't know how I can incorporate that into, in the future. Well, I take my hat off to any stay-at-home mum. I think yeah. it's the hardest yeah. job in the world, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to lie. It, it, it was easier being away working. Yeah. I come home, and, but I love my kids and I want to be a mum as well. And I don't want them to be, you know, anyone else looking after them more than me and my husband. But, you know, it, it's difficult. The parenting is the hardest job in the world. It is. I kind of think as well with the way the demographics is going and the way that 
we're moving on in society the working hours will be less anyway Absolutely, the jobs will, will be a different role so yes. the kind of thank thinking thank you Karen. we've got to leave it there we'll talk about them after the break join us after the break and we're going to talk about page three and how it affects us Welcome back to 52%. Page 3 has been in the news recently with Rupert Murdoch suggesting he's going to bring it to an end. But the demise of Page 3 didn't last long. Here's Gareth to tell you all about it. On 52%, we've been discussing issues that affect women every day. And I don't think that there's a bigger issue facing women today than the casual sexism that exists on some of the pages of Britain's biggest selling newspapers. I'm, of course, referring to Page 3. So I'm going to tell you five incredible facts about page three that are going to make you so angry, you're going to want to join me in ripping up your copy too. Firstly, we're in 2015. Page three was introduced during the sexist 70s. Just to give you some sort of scale there, calculators had literally just been invented and CD-ROMs were a pipe dream. I think it's about time that the sun caught up with the rest of the world. Secondly, it's soft porn in the family newspaper. And until 2003, the models they used were just 16 years old. It's only a matter of time till we look back on that year and think, what the hell were we thinking? Thirdly, what sort of message does page three send to young children? They go through the newspaper and they see uh, pictures of men in suits with big opinions, important jobs, running the country, yet women are there to be ogled at. All it does is just reinforce sexism from a young age. Fourthly, Page three is an icon that perpetuates and normalizes sexism as just banter, introducing phrases like, whoa, look at the rack on that. Well, that is someone's daughter. I need to remember that women are people and not things. And lastly, news, these newspapers would be so much stronger if they were to abandon page three altogether, because any sort of story that they run on women's issues, such as domestic abuse, violence, or sexual harassment in the workplace, are drowned out and contradicted by the neon flashing sign that is page three. So hopefully you've listened to my argument and you agree that page three should be dropped altogether for a fairer and more equal society and that we should all stand up and say no more to page three because boobs aren't news. And if you want to find out some more information about this fantastic course, visit the website www.nomorepage3.org. Well, thanks for that, Gareth. That was a great trick. Thank you very much. We're all interested in page three, aren't we, ladies, somehow? But is it going to be, is, is the end going to be too? It's oh, a big talking point. Well, it, it should be. I mean, <laughs> you can imagine our kids in 10 years' time going, oh, yeah, we used to put naked women in the middle of the paper. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't a family paper, I'd say not. But I wouldn't want my five and eight-year-olds looking at you know, scantily clad mm. women. Objectifying women. Yes. Mm. Well, the thing is, I don't mind it. There is a place for it. You know, there are certain magazines of that ilk yes. where they sit very nicely. Yeah, if that's what you want to choose, want to, choose exactly. to buy. Exactly. Yeah. But I think in a family newspaper mm. now, and particularly after everything we've spoken about today, it just seems very inappropriate. Mm. And God, that makes me sound such a prude, doesn't <laughs> it? Okay. I have been in my bar and knickers on magazines. <laughs> so it's not like <laughs> I'm to ask, Would you do it if you were offered, maybe not page three, but Hugh Hefner, Big Chuck, Playboy, would you? I'm afraid I was at the back of the queue when these assets were given out. These would not be worth paying for. Oh. Do you know, I, I wouldn't know. But I think, if I'm honest, the reason I wouldn't, it would be my two boys now. Mm. I just, it might seem like a good idea at the time, but... I, but then that said, I wouldn't do that. But then if there was a role that required mm. me to do a sex scene, New then I wouldn't have a problem. Yeah. So. I think the thing is, I think it has to be relevant. If mm. I'm trying to tell a story and I'm playing a character telling that story, I don't have an issue. But me, Terry, getting my louse out, no. It's, it's a different <laughs> thing, isn't it? Because it's, it's, showing, it's showing the younger men, especially younger boys growing up, mm. that women are just an object. What's, what's your point of view on it, Gareth, yeah, as a male? I, I, I agree. I think that things like page three and needed in newspapers need to be taken out because all it does is just reinforce sexism from a young age. You mm. see these, as a young child, you're looking at the newspapers and you see men with suits, important opinions, important jobs, CEOs, you know, the head of the companies, and yet women are there in their underwear to be looked at. Yeah. Just, the objectification of women needs to stop in, in, in media. But it's only one click away on the internet, so what difference does it make taking it out of a newspaper when it's there on the internet? I think well, there's a difference between a newspaper that you buy that's available for the family and going on to, mm. I don't know if there are CD websites, I'm not, it's not, <laughs> not, my, not my cup oh, of tea. Oh, come on, you can tell us. You're a month's friend. Not my cup Your of tea. Your Friday night viewing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Well, you're welcome around it, but don't bring a computer. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But um, Karen, what, what kind of message is it sending out to the younger generation growing up and seeing that? Well, I kind of think it's it's like you said, it's about the exploitation of women and the perceptions of what we're there for and our roles. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really sit well with the struggles we are, we're fighting with within the boardroom and the, the, the way we're trying to bring forward equality. Mm. Um, I think that's the bigger picture of it. Do you see in the boardroom now and, and, and in the business world in general, women using their sexuality to get further up the ladder than women who perhaps don't? You know, low cut top, short skirts, that kind of obvious way they will try and get, get their message or get the job they want by using their bodies. I kind of think there is some women that do that. Um, in my younger days, I was stopped from going further on in, in my roles because I wouldn't feed into that area. But I kind of think it's about you developing the way you dress to what audience you're, you're facing. Mm. You know that from your acting yeah. role. So, for instance, if I, because I'd work across culture, I'm mindful if I go work in, in another culture with, uh, with is people with Islam, I will cover my arms mm. and, you know, be respectful. So I kind of think, but men seem to think that there's, there's an object of our boobs being object of theirs, not ours. And a lot of men will draw their eye down to you yeah. if you do wear a low cut. I think we yeah. have to be careful as well not yeah. to sexualise our children. I mean, we're, we're parents. I mean, there was uh, there was a hoo-ha not long ago when they were selling G-strings oh. for young girls and, and padded, padded bras. bras. I mean, they need to be kids for as long as possible. Yeah. And I think the society we live in at the moment, they already grow up too quickly. So... I think that's just another extension of it, isn't it? Well, my daughter Olivia's nine, and I already know she's influenced far too much by this Kardashian lifestyle oh. of not doing anything yet achieving it all, and I find that really frustrating. Well, it's sad, isn't it? Because you ask not not all kids. Some kids, you know, they're not all the same. But you know, you say, "What do you want?" To, oh, well, I want to be famous. They they miss the fact that if you want to be an actress or you want to be a presenter or you want to be a foot, you know. It's the skill that then mm. leads to the fame. It's it not just being happen. famous isn't a job. Mm. No, no. It's a byproduct yeah. of the job that you yeah. do. And I think we as we as media do have a responsibility to that as a degree. And I think unfortunately the reality shows have brought that whole different <laughs> level, yeah. like the Kardashians mm. and, and even Essex. Oh, gosh, you know, the yeah. only way is yeah. Essex. I mean, they all create this industry Famous within themselves mm. but we need a more positive female role models to come and speak out because for me i think there's a lot of responsibility on the ladies who are going and taking their top off and posing mm -hmm. for page three to to maybe take a bit of a stance and go you know what no us women don't want to do this together anymore but those type of women are they are they letting the other intelligent hard-working women down well i think there was a place for page three i'm not mm. vilifying it i think back in the day it was accepted and i've known very nice people that have had great jobs in page three i just think times have moved on now and yeah. i think we should move on with it but it women have moved on in the 70s wasn't it yeah. which was which was a hugely sexist time and, yeah. and back then the, the calculator had just been invented mm -hmm. and the cd-roms they, they weren't even uh, around then so you mm -hmm. just think how antiquated it is and, and drawing on the point that you made earlier about that sort of low the low-cut skirt and the low-cut top like this, this year's apprentice, there's one woman on there that said, oh, why don't we all like, tie ourselves up? But the, the, other, the other women in the, on the show, they were all very serious businesswomen. Mm. They're like, that's not what we do in the 21st century. So mm. it is a, an antiquated view. Yeah. I yeah. kind of think because we touched on um, role models and mentors, there's a lack of female role models, especially in businesses. Mm. You find it really hard to find women to mm. associate with and to aspire to. And there is a programme that was called, internationally called We Mentor. Mm. I was involved in and I was so happy when I actually got a woman mentor for the first time not having men because it was actually someone I could relate with in Why business. do you think it's so hard to get women though? Because there are successful women out there. There so are, yeah. Is it a confidence just, thing, do you think? We don't blow our own trumpets, no. do we? We, well, we, we don't, but it's the thing about Emma Watson before. She, she stood mm. up, she spoke out, she's then become subject to a whole lot of abuse for being the one to mm. stand yeah. up. I think a lot of people are getting put off by, I don't want to be the one. It's, it's, it's a brief. Yes, I mean, Angelina Jolie, what she does, her humanitarian work. I mean, she's, a, she's an epic role model, yeah. I think, for the younger women. She does great films. Mm -hmm. I mean, Maleficent, the last one she did, which was Amazing. targeting at kids. She yeah. was incredible. And so I think her voice is very strong. So we need more women like her. We do. Yeah. I'm talking about grassroots role models okay, yeah. women mm -hmm. day to day who see women doing the roles that they want to do 
and doing using the role models within the school and education mm. system for us to see that there are women doing them roles so instance for the we will talk about women in technology yeah. for the younger people to see the geek ladies yeah. actually applying it to business for me seeing a real woman who who's a on day-to-day -day basis who was a chief exec of an organization and became my role model was immense to me mm. someone who in real life not yeah. not not a movie star or an actress who you're never going to see or but then you say yeah. that but the younger generation yeah. that's the people particularly of the mm -hmm. generation we've just yeah. been talking that's the people they're going to listen to they are going to listen to angelina jolie because they they they, they hero worship that mm -hmm. kind of person i mean it is sad and i don't disagree yeah. with you but yeah. i think unfortunately we have perpetuated that young generation that is quite impressed by all that Absolutely. the fame and everything and else. Is, it, is it a schooling thing because we were talking earlier about how how girls are pushed into certain career paths men are pushed maybe it's up to teachers and parents to mm. at a young age maybe be telling telling these kids now if you want if you want to be an engineer you can be you can be an engineer you don't have to be a man to be an engineer is it a responsibility that needs to come very early on I think it needs to be mm -hmm. done right from the cradle, mm -hmm. yeah. really, because the role specific issues we're having. We are generating academics and scientists, women, but they're not getting the jobs. That's the issue we have around the uh, equality. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, thank you very much for joining us today, everyone, for our first show. Thanks to Terry Dwyer. Thank you. Thanks to Karen Bellion. And of course, thanks to Gareth as well for his mm -hmm. wonderful trick. I'd like to down there in the corner. <laughs> It's been a really, really good debate. Thanks very much for joining us. Don't forget to tweet us on at BayTV Liverpool underscore at BayTV underscore Liverpool hashtag 52. Yes, yeah, see you next time.